वेलकम टू सर्विस मार्केटिंग नाउ वी विल टॉक अबाउट मॉड्यूल थर्टी सिक्स एंड एज यू कैन सी दैट वी आर इन द लास्ट सेक्शन ऑफ दिस कोर्स दैट इज स्ट्राइविंग फॉर सर्विस एक्सेलेंस एंड इट हैज टू टाइटल्स टू बी कवर्ड मॉड्यूल थर्टी सिक्स थर्टी सेवन एंड थर्टी एट विल टॉक अबाउट इम्प्रूविंग सर्विस क्वालिटी एंड प्रोडक्टिविटी सो इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल टॉक अबाउट द फॉलोइंग फाइव थिंग्स द फर्स्ट is that we will explain the relationships between service quality productivity and profitability we will familiarize ourselves with different perspective of service quality then we will demonstrate how to use the gaps model of service quality for diagnosing and addressing service quality problems differentiate between hard and soft measures of service quality and explain some common objectives of effective customer feedback systems now let us look at this triangle this integrate service quality and productivity strategies so now you see that on the three vertices of this triangle there are three things the one is profitability the second is service quality and the third is productivity now we will talk about each of them in in detail but uh, but to j- just to give you a brief overview service quality increased service quality increases the profitability and also increased productivity increase uh, increases the profitability of the firm and the relationship between productivity and service quality can in uh, uh, can be good bad or it can be neutral so i'll explain these three relationships in the upcoming slides when we are examining the individual links it is evident that everything being equal what happens then the higher customer satisfaction should improve the bottom line that is the profitability how because of higher repeat purchases the increased share of wallet and referrals higher productivity should lead to higher profitability as costs are reduced the relationship between productivity and customer satisfaction is more complex there is a general notion of a service productivity and customer satisfaction trade off so the problem here is that what people think that if the service productivity goes up then the customer satisfaction will come down so for increased customer satisfaction the service productivity should be low but if service productivity is low then profitability also decreases however although the relationships between productivity service quality and profitability can conflict there are examples where productivity gains and customer satisfaction are aligned for example if a service firm redesigns customer service processes to be leaner faster and more convenient by eliminating non value adding work steps then both productivity and customer satisfaction should improve and both should have a direct and indirect positive effect on profitability an example would be to serve it yourself yogurt stores which substitute relatively inexpensive and easy to use self service machines for multiple human contact people in this case there is a positive impact on profitability through increased productivity and increased customer satisfaction resulting in higher customer loyalty if productivity improvement results in changes in the service experience that customer do not like customer satisfaction will drop so keep in mind that this productivity improvement should be what customer like otherwise that will lead to reduce customer satisfaction for example getting service employees to work faster may make customers feel rushed and unwanted so the whole idea is that service employees should not be uh, asked to work faster because that will lead to reduced customer satisfaction replacing a human agent in a customer contact center with an interactive voice response system to reduce head count so a customer care executive is replaced by uh, the uh, interactive voice response system so the uh, the head count also come down and that will uh, uh, lead to increased productivity doubling class sizes to increase the productivity of university professors and reducing the frequency of trains to increase load factor 
can also have negative implications for the customer experience. In these cases, there is a trade-off to be expected, whereby in the short term, productivity enhancements have an immediate and direct positive effect on profitability and in the medium to long term, these productivity enhancements lead to lower customer satisfaction, which are likely to lead to lower customer loyalty and referrals. This means that these productivity improvements have a positive direct effect on profitability, but also a negative indirect effect via customer satisfaction. So now as you know, productivity gains and customer satisfaction, they are not aligned, that is neutral. So what, what the basic idea of, of all this thing is that if productivity increases, then the service quality comes down. That, and that leads to customer dissatisfaction. If productivity uh, is goes down, then customer satisfaction and service quality increases. So now how to go about aligning these two things? Because at one end we have the company's goal, on the other hand we have the customer's goal. So some quality improvement may not have any implications on productivity. For example, improving a process in the front office that does not change the cost of providing it and vice versa, for example, improving efficiency of back op office operations that do not have implications for customer touch points. In these cases, there is only a single positive effect of productivity improvements on profitability or of customer satisfaction improvement on profitability. So either we are reducing this, co this, this cost by way of productivity improvement or we are increasing customer satisfaction, so that will lead to uh, profitability. So, at the one hand, we are reducing cost, another, and at another end, we are increasing customer satisfaction and loyalty and so on. So, that also increases the profitability. As is clear from the previous discussion that we have had, relationship between productivity and customer satisfaction can be positive, neutral, or negative. So, positive is that as the productivity increases, customer satisfaction increases. And negative is when uh, productivity decreases, customer satisfaction also decreases. In broad term, quality focuses on the benefit created for the customer side of the equation and productivity addresses the financial cost incurred by the firm. And if not properly integrated, these two foci can be in conflict. So we have to keep in mind that productivity and satisfaction both are important at the same time one from the point of view of the company, another for, is from the point of view of the customer. Thus, service quality and productivity improvement strategies must be considered jointly and not in isolation. What is service quality? Quality means different things to different people according to the context. So, there is no single correct definition of quality. Common perspective on quality include the manufacturing based approach. So, that is from where it is started. It is primarily concerned with engineering and manufacturing practices and typically means delivering against measurable standards within certain tolerance levels. For example, tolerance levels for wheel seams in car manufacturing. Now we come to services and then we will see what is service quality. In services, we should say that quality is operations driven. It focuses on the conformance to internally developed specifications and they tend to be tightly aligned with productivity and cost containment goals. So, in services, it focuses on conformance to internally developed specifications and these tend to be tightly aligned with productivity and cost containment goals. The nature of service requires a distinctive approach in defining and measuring service quality. So, the approach that we have used in manufacturing to define quality is not good enough for services. For services, we need a distinctive approach to defining and measuring the quality of services. The intangible, multifaceted nature of many services makes it harder to evaluate quality of a service as compared to a good. So, now you see that in this figure, this person has written with ketchup, waited 30 minutes, got no service. So, service quality can be difficult to manage for the fussy dinner. Because these services, they are intangible and they have multi faces. So, that is why it is difficult to evaluate the quality of a service. It is much 
easier to evaluate the quality of a good but not of a service. When customers are involved in service production, a distinction needs to be drawn between the process of service delivery that is the functional quality and the actual output that is outcome of the service that is technical quality. So, now you see that here we are talking about two types of quality. One is this functional quality, another is this technical quality. So, when customers are involved in service production, we have to distinguish between the process of service delivery and the outcome. So, there are two types of things that we are worried about. One is the process and another is the outcome. So, this process is functional quality and this is technical quality. So, Christian Gunrus calls the process of service delivery as functional quality and the actual output or outcome of the service as technical quality. Service quality from user's perspective can be defined as a high standard of performance that consistently meets or exceeds customer expectation. So, this is performance that meets or exceeds customer expectation. So, this is what we are talking of performance that is always greater than equal to the expectations. Then there is this model that is called as the gaps model in service design and delivery. Gaps at any point in service design and delivery can damage relationship with the customer. So, uh, as the name suggests we are looking at gap in the design and delivery. It is not only about design or only about delivery, but, but both of them. Improving service quality requires identifying specific causes of each gap and developing strategies to close them. So, there are several gaps each uh, the causes for each gap is, are to be identified and then there are strategies to close down each gap. Valeri Jethmal and uh, Parsu Raman and uh, Leonard Berry identified four potential gaps that may lead to the fifth and most serious final gap, the difference between what customer expected and what they perceived was delivered. So, that is the final gap, the most important gap, this one, the difference between what customer expected and what they perceived was delivered to them and there are four gaps that may lead to this gap, this is the most important gap. So, the gaps model offers generic insights and solutions applicable across the industries and this is this gaps model of service quality. So, now this is let us start from here. So, above this line are the customer and below this below this line are, are the service. So, this gap 1 is the knowledge gap, the gap 2 is called as the policy gap, the gap 3 is called as the delivery gap, gap 4 is the communication gap, gap 5 is the perception gap and the gap 6 is the service quality gap. Now, let us see that this starts with management perception of customer expectations. So, it starts with how do managers perceive the customer expectations and then these management perception of customer expectations are then translated into perceptions into service quality specifications. So, the management perception of customer expectations are then translated into service quality specifications that is B. Then based on this B, this C happens that is service delivery and then it moves on here, this is external communication to the consumers. So, it moves here and this all this arrow from translation of perceptions into service quality specifications, the input also goes to external communication to the customer. Now, service del delivery then moves on towards up upwards and we have this perceived service, expected service and then 
this expected service is affected by the past experience, the personal needs, the word of mouth and then this expected service is also affected by the management perception of consumer expectations. This past experience affects the expected service, external communication to the consumers also affect the expected service. So, you see that this expected service is affected by the word of mouth communication, the personal needs, the past experience and external communication to the customer. So, all these things they affect uh, expected service and expected service is also affected by the management perception of consumer expectations. So, these are the four things that affect the expected service and then uh, and below it is the perceived service and when the perceived service and expected service do not match that is called as gap 6 that is the service quality gap. When the service delivery and perceived service there is a gap between them it is the gap 5 that is the perception gap. When there is a difference between service delivery and translation of perceptions into service quality specifications that is called as the delivery gap that is gap 3 and the gap between the management perception of customer expectations and then translation of these perceptions into service quality specifications they are gap 1 that is the policy gap and this gap between the expected service and management perception of, of customer expectation is the first gap that is the knowledge gap. So, when we move on this line this is gap 1 between expected service and the management perception of customer expectations. So, this is gap 1 and we are talking of this uh, important gap that is the gap between expected service and the perceived service. So, gap 1 is the knowledge gap difference between what senior management believes customer expects and what customer actually need and expect. Gap 2 is the policy gap difference between management's understanding of customer expectations and service standards they set for service delivery. Gap 3 is the delivery gap difference between specified service standards and service delivery teams actual performance on these standards. Gap 4 is the communication gap that is the difference that is the difference between what company communicates to the customer and what customer understands and subsequently experiences. So, this is what they promise and this is what customer experiences. Gap 5 is the perception gap difference between what is actually delivered and what customer feels they received. Gap 6 is, six is service quality gap difference between what customer expects to receive and their perception of services that is actually delivered. Now, let us look at the suggestions for closing this service quality gaps. So, let us start with gap 1 that is the knowledge gap and this knowledge gap is the difference between what senior management believes customer expects and what customers actually need and expect. Now, suggestions to close down this gap 1 is to educate management about what customer expects, implement an effective customer feedback system that include satisfaction research, complaint and complement content analysis, customer panels and online monitoring. Sharpen your marketing research procedures including questionnaires and interview design, sampling and field implementation and periodically repeat the research studies because these expectations and perceptions they keep on changing quickly. That is why there is a need to periodically repeat these research studies. Increase the interactions between customers and senior management that is programs such as a day in the field and senior management taking calls in customer contact center. So, the senior management get to know what the customer expects and therefore, the gap between customer expectations and the management perception of customer expectations will come down. Improve upward communication and facilitate and encourage communication between frontline employees and the management. So, again that is a strategy for empowering the all important frontline employee. Now, these people because they are in touch with the customer, they are in contact with the customer, they know 
what are the various problems and if they are able to communicate all these problems to the top management then it becomes easier for the for the company to sort out the issues and to and to remove the uh, the fault points gap 2 is the policy gap so establish the right service product processes and standards that are based on customer needs and expectations so keep in mind that first we have to understand customer needs and expectations and then establish the right kind of service product processes and standards get the products and customer service processes right set communicate and reinforce measurable customer oriented service standard for all the work units develop tiered service product that meet expect customer expectations so customer may have different expectations at different points points in time the same customer may have different expectations at different points in time therefore there is a need to develop a tiered service uh, products so that their expectations different expectations at different points in time can be met gap 3 is the delivery gap now suggestion is ensure that performance meet the standards ensure that customer service teams are motivated and are able to meet service standard so these customer service teams need to be motivated in order to deliver on the standards install the right technology equipment support processes and the capacity so that these customer service people they are able to deliver on the standards manage customers for service quality so customers again have to be managed for service quality that is satisfaction then effectively align intermediaries and third party involved in service delivery so if in your service delivery there are intermediaries and third party involved then uh, they are also they also have to be effectively aligned with the standards the gap 4 is the communication gap suggestion is close internal and external communication gap by ensuring communication promises are realistic and correctly understood by the customers so this is important that external and internal communication gaps should be eliminated by ensuring that communication promises the promises made by the company are realistic and correctly understood by the customers ensure that communication content sets realistic expectations so this content should be so that the customer expectations remain realistic and educate managers responsible for sales and marketing communication about operational capabilities align incentives for sales team with those of service delivery teams sales teams and the service delivery teams this will avoid the problem where the sales team focus exclusively on generating sales so because to they want to generate more sales they may be over promising customers but then how the uh, that promise will be delivered by the service delivery team so that creates a problem and neglect customer satisfaction through disappointed expectations so the sales delivery team in order to increase sales they over promise but obviously the service delivery team is not able to deliver on that so that creates disappointment in the customers and be specific with promises and manage customers understanding of communication content the fifth gap is the perceptions gap and the suggestion to close this gap is to tangibilize and communicate service quality delivered make service quality tangible and communicate the service quality delivered make it tangible and then communicate it because communi communicating intangibles is all the more difficult so develop service environment and physical evidence cues that are consistent with the level of service provided for complex and those services which are high on credence attributes keep customer informed during service delivery of what is being done and give debriefings about the delivery so customers can appreciate 
the quality of service received. After completion of the work, explain what work was performed in relation to a specific billing statement. So, this bills should match the work that was performed and that has to be communicated and explained to the customers. It has to be communicated and explained. Provide physical evidence, for example, for repairs, show customers the damaged component that were removed. So, the service station uh, gives the customer back the, the damaged part and they replace it as so that that acts as the physical evidence of, of service. The gap 6 is suggestion is to close gap 1 to 5 to consistently meet customer expectations. Gap 6 is the accumulated outcome of all the preceding gaps. It will be closed when gap 1 to 5 have been addressed. So, when these one gap 1 to 5 are addressed are reduced or closed down. So, this gap will automatically be taken care of. So, the challenge is, is starting from gap 1, the bigger the gap 1 that will then, then pass on to the gap 2, gap 3, gap 4 and 5. So, the biggest challenge is to key, is to narrow down the gap 1 and to uh, narrow down the gap 2, 3, 4, 5 and then automatically this gap 6 will be reduced or eliminated. That is when the customer perceptions meet the customer expectations. How do we measure service quality? Having discussed the gaps model and the generic prescriptions. Next, we discuss how to use measurement to guide our service quality improvement efforts. It is commonly said that what is not measured is not managed. Without measurements, managers cannot be sure whether service quality gaps exist. So, that is important that they are able to measure and only then they will be able to tell what kind of gaps exist and how big the gaps are let alone what types of gap, where they exist and what potential corrective action should be taken. Measurement determines whether goals for improvement are met after changes have been implemented. Then there are some hard and soft service quality measures. Customer defined standards and measures of service quality can be grouped into two broad categories, the hard standards and the soft standards. Organization known for service excellence make use of both these kind of measures, the hard measures and the soft measures or the hard standards or the soft standards. These organizations are good at listening to both their customers and their customers contact employee. So, they also talk to the frontline employee and they also talk to the customers. Now, let us look at what are these soft standards. Soft standards and their measures cannot be easily observed and are typically gathered by talking to the customer. Soft standards provide direction, guidance and feedback. So, they provide one direction, second is guidance and the third is feedback to employees on how to achieve customer satisfaction and they can be quantified by measuring customer perceptions and beliefs. So, measuring measure customer uh, perceptions and beliefs and then quantify. Servoql is a sophisticated soft measurement equipment. This is what we are talking of. This is a, a short form of service quality. So, this is an instrument that measures soft uh, that is a soft measurement system. Then there are some hard standards. Hard standards and measures are typically process activities and outcomes that can be counted, timed and measured. So, hard standards means those standards that can be counted, timed and measured. Such measures may include how many orders were filled correctly. So, there is a number for example, 5, the time required to complete a specific task 15, how many minutes customer had to wait in line at a particular stage in the service delivery. So, 30 minutes. How many trains arrived late? 7. 
how many telephone calls were dropped when customers were on hold so that can be 3 how many patients made a complete recovery following a specific type of surgery so that can be 11 so these are hard standards that can be counted timed and measured now learning from customers feedback the key objective of effective customer feedback system it is not the strongest species that survive nor the most intelligent but the ones most responsive to change. So, this is what Charles Darwin said. Similarly, many strategists have concluded that in increasingly competitive market, the best competitive advantage for a firm is to learn and change faster than the competition and that will help them in, in survival and success. So, how to go about uh, doing that? The first is assessment and benchmarking of service quality and performance. Objective is to answer the questions, how satisfied are our customers? That includes learning about how well a firm performed in comparison to its main competitors, in comparison to the previous years or quarter or month, whether investments in certain service aspects have paid off in terms of customer satisfaction and where the firm wants to be the following year. The second is customer driven learning and improvements. Objective is to answer the question what makes our customer happy or unhappy and what are the strengths we want to cement and what are the weaknesses we need to improve upon. More specific or detailed information on processes and product is required in order to guide a firm service improvement efforts and pinpoint which areas have possible high returns for quality investments. Creating a customer oriented service culture that is concerned with bringing the voice of the customer into the organization, focusing on customer needs and customer satisfaction and rallying the entire organization towards service quality culture and that includes fostering a culture of continuous improvement and change. So, to conclude this module, we have started our discussion with the relationships between service quality, productivity and profitability. So, we have seen the impact of both these service quality and productivity on profitability. This increases the customer satisfaction and this reduces the cost. Service quality increases the customer satisfaction while productivity decreases the cost. Thereafter, we have discussed the different perspective on service quality and demonstrated how to use the GAPS model for diagnosing and addressing service quality problems. Then we have talked about the hard and the soft standards or measures. Finally, the key objective of, of effective customer feedback systems were deliberated upon and these are the three books from which the material for this module was used. Thank you.